Ladies and gentlemen, today is October 26, 2017. Objective number one says, how does a tree have 40 different fruit? So this is what I need you to think about. Look at this picture of the tree. What do you notice about this tree? Make some observations. It has many different colors. That means it probably has many different, what are these things called? These beautiful pinks and purples and whites, they're called what, Austin? Well, they're petals, good, because they're part of a what? What are they part of? A bigger thing. Petal is one organ of the, or one tissue of the flower. So the flower, its ultimate goal is to do what for the plant? The flower is what kind of organ, Dwayne? What type of organ? Yes, it's for sexual reproduction. So the flower allows this um, tree or this plant to reproduce sexually. What is it making? It's making these little tiny little things called what? Austin. Think of the seeds, and the seeds get protected inside the ovary, which swells and grows into a fruit. Thank you. The fruit. So this tree has 40 different fruit. How is it possible? Is this artificial or is it natural? Do you think a tree could have 40 different fruit naturally all by itself in the wild grow 40 different fruits? No, because a fruit comes from one plant that's one species, that's one organism. There are 40 different organisms all growing on the same species. Hmm, I wonder how that's possible. Today's lesson deals with how plants reproduce, but not with um, sex. We did learn about how plants reproduce with sex. So the term that describes um, how plants reproduce, that allow them to reproduce with two um, people, is called sexual reproduction. What did we say sex was? What is happening when sex happens? Yes, good job. We're crossing genes. So re sexual reproduction is crossing genes. You're getting genes from both parents that are crossing. What happens, though, when you put a prefix in front of the word? You change the meaning of the word. So sexual reproduction is crossing of genes. I put an A in front of it. What happens to the meaning of the word sexual reproduction? I don't have crossing of genes anymore. Now I have this. What does this A mean when you put an A in front, the prefix A, like against, or what are the words that start with A? Go ahead, Darian. That is what it is. That's the definition. But let's look at the um, meaning of the prefix A. What does that mean when you put an A in front of something? We didn't learn yet the term abiotic, but A is a prefix that means something. It changes the meaning of a word. What do you think it could mean? You already know what this term means, so figure it out. When you put the letter A in front of it, we change the meaning of the word. We change it to what? Well, okay, so now if there's only one, can we cross genes? No, if there's only one parent, there's no crossing of genes. So A means with out a means without against or without we're against crossing of genes or without crossing of genes you're not crossing genes so if you're not crossing genes where are you get your genes from only one parent so asexual reproduction we know involves one parent because we don't cross genes so all the genes come from that one parent so what does that mean do the babies look alike yeah, but how about in sexual reproduction? Do they look alike? No, they resemble, but they don't because they have genes that have been crossed. They have some characteristics. With asexual, they have only one parent. So what did I do in this experiment with the celery? What did we cut? We cut the, what, are these, what, what part is this? The transport vascular tissue is called the, the xylem and the phloem. So what is the name of that organ? The stem, we cut the stems and now we got new stems and leaves. But did I have leaves before? No, they just grew. Guess what else I got? I got roots all from the stems. How did I do this? What did I do? Did anybody remember? We put water in it, but what did I do to get this there? Somebody actually first period did it for me in Miss Weber's class. 
They took a knife and they cut it. And they brought it back. They also cut the root of the carrot. Look at the carrot. Now, this is a root already, the orange part. So can you see any little hairs coming out? No, because that's the root. But what do you, what do you see coming out the top? Stems and leaves. Pretty soon, I'll probably plant this today sometime. I'll plant it tomorrow so that every class can continue to see it. What do you see with this? These are leaves. And what about this on the bottom? You see the lettuce has its own roots. So we, I cut the leaves and now we got uh, roots and leaves. How crazy is that? And all we needed was water. But all I had to do was cut it. So we're thinking about ways that plants can reproduce without crossing genes. Some of these ways are natural. This happens all by themselves. And sometimes it's not natural. It happens with a little help from humans, us. Yeah, well, GMOs, that's a whole different story that we'll talk about when we do genetics. All right, I'm pausing this video so that we can add to it in a little while because you're going to go to your groups. Groups.